Hi, welcome to the screencast for the Topic 10 quiz. I've written out the um, slides here for Topic 10. I wasn't able to get my actual copy to load as a PDF, so you'll just have to bear with my poor penmanship, but it's okay, we'll get some solutions for you here. So number one asks, which of the structures below is an aldehyde? So if you look at the first one, the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the functional group is a double bonded O and it's at the end so that should be our aldehyde, and then just checking the others to make sure we know what we're doing. If we've got the same functional group, but it's in the center, we're in an interior carbon, so that makes it a ketone. C, we've got the double bonded O at the end, but we've also got an OH, so that makes an organic or carboxylic acid. And D, we've got the double bonded O on the interior, it should be, but it's also got the single bonded O, which means it's some kind of ester. So the only one that fits the description of an aldehyde is A. Number two wants to know what's the product of ethene, CH2, CH2, with Br2. And so remember, this uh, double bond here would open up and give you a place for bromine to fit onto each of the carbons. The two hydrogen would remain with each one. So D, CH2Br, CH2Br would be our product, and that's a dihalogeno alkane. as opposed to just a halogeno alkane, which typically forms uh, through that whole free radical mechanism with Br2 and an alkane. Number three wants to know what's the final product of CH3CH2OH refluxed with acidified potassium dichromate. So remember, oxygen or alcohols will oxidize um, with acidified potassium dichromate, if they're primary or secondary, the tertiary can't oxidize. And since this is a primary, I can tell that looking at the OH attached to the end. Of course, it only has two carbons, so it's going to have to be primary. So this can um, react twice. It can form an aldehyde, and then it can form a carboxylic acid. So C is my carboxylic acid. Now D looks like a good choice, but D, because of the way it's written, is letting you know this would actually be an ester because uh, the hydrogen's at the end and the two oxygens are branched off that way. So it looks slightly different than the carboxylic acid above it, which would look like this. So C is the correct choice. Number four, they want to know which is true about a homologous series. They have the same empirical formula. That's not quite true. They have the same general formula but they do differ by a CH2 group, so that's not going to be the same empirical formula. They possess the same functional groups. Different families have different functional groups. And they differ in degrees of saturation. Remember, this is the number of single versus multiple bonds. And no, they're not going to degree, differ in their degree of saturation. They're going to be the same because the whole idea with homologous series is these are families, so they're going to have a lot in common. So B would be the only true statement. Number five, what's the name for CH3, CH2, CH, CH3? Um, if you need a quick sketch, it's going to look like this without the hydrogens on it. And as you look at it, you see that you've got two three CH3 groups, so you've got three ends, so there's at least one branch. Isopentane, we haven't used the word iso, you may have heard of isopropyl or rubbing alcohol, but that's not an IUPAC name because we haven't seen that prefix at all, so we can eliminate that one. So then the question is, what's our longest chain? We have four in a row, so it's a butane, and there's a methyl group attached to it, so B2-methylbutane would be the correct choice. And number six, the number of isomers for C6H14, easiest thing to do is just start with the straight chain, which would be six of them. Then look at a chain of five and think where you could put that other one. If you put it on the end here, that's really just the same thing as this. So that doesn't count. But I could take a chain of five and I could put it here. Or I could take my chain of five and I could put it here, and I would have 2-methyl or 3-methyl pentane. So that would be uh, a total of 3 so far. And then if I continue to look, I could make 4, and I could put 1 on each of the carbons there, or could I have 4, and I could put 1 above and 1 below either of those carbons. If I go to 3, 
The problem is now by the time I attach these, I actually have four. So that's going to be the most I can make is one, two, three, four, five different ones or B. Number seven wants to know the correct name for this structure. So if I find my longest carbon backbone, it's either here or here, either one, it's five. So this is a pentane of some group, which since they've got a lot of butanes there, I can be pretty sure it's 2-methylpentane. And if I just double check that, that's indeed what we have. The second carbon has a methyl group attached to the backbone of 5. Number 8 says C3H8, so that's uh, propane, produces what with incomplete combustion? Well, complete combustion with any hydrocarbon is always CO2 and H2O. Incomplete combustion, you still have the water. H2 is never a product of incomplete combustion. That incomplete combustion is a lack of oxygen is what causes it. And that oxygen then gets removed from the CO2. So CO plus H2O or even C plus H2O would be products of incomplete combustion. Number nine, products form from oxidation of ethanol. So if you think ethanol would just be like so with the five hydrogens attached. So this could be a primary alcohol. So that means I could make both an aldehyde and a carboxylic acid. Ethane would not be an option, however. So one and two, but not three, which means A would be my best choice. Number 10, what's the reaction type when CH33Br and NaOH form? So this is what you're supposed to recognize is this is a tertiary halogenoalkane. And so because it's tertiary, because of the steric hindrance or these three methyl groups on there, this is going to undergo the SN1 mechanism. The Br is going to have to break off before the OH can move in. So that would be C. 11, which is a free radical? The idea is that you recognize it's an atom with one unpaired electron. So it's not an ion. So that takes B and C out of it, and it's an unpaired electron, so it's represented with letter A. Number 12, the structural formula for ethene. So two carbons, one double bond. There's only one place for that to go. So that means there's four hydrogens attached to it. And then to find unsaturated, it means um, it's a compound with at least one multiple bond. And if you said double bond, that's fine. Uh, multiple is a little more accurate because it could be a triple bond. And then B, uh, the equation for ethene to ethanol and the reaction type. Well, if I had my CH2 here, if that's going to become an alcohol, I'm going to need the carbon double bond to open up. I'm going to need OH to add to one place, H to the other. The four original hydrogens stay there. So that means I added hydrogen. So this would be called hyd um, hydration. Slightly different than hydrogenation, which means adding hydrogen. Hydration, just like dehydration, means removing water. Hydration means you're hydrating or adding water. Also on number 12, then they ask uh, some questions about the complete oxidation. You're asked to describe the complete oxidation of ethanol and name the product, include the conditions, reagent, and color changes. So these three things here were considered your description. So this is a total of four marks. So your conditions are heat. The reagents are oxygen. And then, of course, the acidified potassium dichromate. That's really not a catalyst um, because a catalyst doesn't undergo any change. This is the piece that's being reduced so that the alcohol can be oxidized. And this is dichromate 6. So those are your reagents. And the color change, orange gets oxidized to green. And when you see that color change to green, you know the change has occurred or it's a go. And then name the product. Um, since it's ethene, that means this is a primary alcohol. Um, 
and so my product, my end product here, will undergo twice, and the end product would be ethanoic acid. And then D wants the equation for ethanol plus the product in C, so ethanol, I'm going to leave the oxygens off this, and then my product in C, I said I was going to end up with ethanoic acid. So when those two get together, you may remember this from lab, the OH from the um, alcohol comes off, it combines with the hydrogen, so this is dehydration, and my final product then is going to be CC, the O is here, the other O is here, and C. And so the other reagent needed is sulfuric acid, or H2SO4, and a lot of times this is a uh, catalyst. A lot of times it's just written above the arrow. And the name they want to know, I guess I didn't list that here. The name, you name the alcohol first, so that's ethyl. And then O8 is going to be combined with whatever the name of the organic acid was, which was also an ethyl, ethyl group, so ethanoate. So this just becomes ethyl ethanoate. And uses the big flavor, the big uh, uses as a flavor or a scent. Um, it's also used in perfumes. It's used as a solvent in a lot of things. But flavoring would probably be the one you would recognize because of the lab we did in class. Number two, uh, 13, part one wants you to draw propanol two. So I've got three carbon groups. It's telling me the OH is off of there. And since we're being asked to draw it, I will go ahead and put the hydrogens in. So I have CH7, C3H7OH, drawn as so. Is this a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol? This is a secondary because there's two carbon groups attached to the carbon containing the hydroxy group. So if you oxidize, this product would form a ketone, or more specifically, um, this ketone would be propanon. If you wanted to draw the structure, you could do that as well, ch 3 co CH3. And the number 14 uh, wants to know the trend in boiling point with alkanes. Specifically, they said alkanes 1 through 6. But the longer alkane results in more surface area. So more van der Waals or intermolecular forces. So that means you're going to see an increase in boiling point. And then they want to know the equation for methane, CH4, plus chlorine. And that's going to form, you may remember, it's going to form CH3, Cl, and then HCl. So this is the overall reaction. And this was a five-mark question. They wanted you to explain it in terms of a free radical mechanism. So what they expect you to know here is that the initiation forms free radicals. So an example, Cl2 with UV light will split and form you two free radicals. You could have written 2Cl with the free radical sign on it. Oops, I'm trying to scroll up here but not actually scrolling, so let me try that again. And then um, the next step is what's called propagation. So free radicals react and form more free radicals. So an example of this would be your CL free radical, one chlorine free radical, could react with CH4 and form a CH3 free radical as well as HCl. And if you wanted to give other steps, you could. In fact, um, what converts this to our final product is that CH3 free radical will form with a chlorine. And now I end up with the CH3 Cl and another Cl free radical to continue the process. And then the final step is um, termination. And termination is 
two free radicals combine, which stops uh, the, the uh, chain reaction from going. So I'll include that stopping the chain reaction, at least for two free radicals. And an example of that is when a Cl and a Cl find each other, they will form Cl2. And that is it for the topic 10 quiz.